This movie is on setting up data validation criteria. There are standard settings available for the data validation criteria that include establishing rules for an acceptable whole number, decimal. You can reference a list so that the input has to be an item on the list. You can establish rules for dates, times, and even the text length that's input into a cell. Once established, the validation rules can be copied. So we'll take a look at that. And we can also update the validation rules and apply those changes to all cells containing that validation rule. And we can have Excel circle data that doesn't fit the validation criteria. I have a worksheet set up where I have some criteria that's listed in a range of cells beginning in B5 and extending down to E12. And we're going to use these numerical dimensions that's in columns D through E to establish acceptable input values for the cells in columns H to K. So the first thing I want to do is select the cell that I want to input a validation rule for, which in this case is I5. I'm going to go to Data, the Data tab, left-click Data Validation in the Data Tools group, and then left-click Data Validation again. I'm going to move this out of the way. We have a drop-down list that enables us to establish rules for content that's being input into a cell that include whole numbers, which is where we're going to start. I'm going to left-click Whole Number, and the next choice that we can make is a list that allows us to establish criteria within the parameters on this list, between, not between, equal to, not equal to, and so on. I'm going to select between. The next field that we have to define is the minimum value. And I can either do this dynamically, which is what we're going to do, or I can input a value directly and hard code the minimum value. I could put a 10 in there. I'm going to backspace twice, but I don't want to do that. I want to establish the minimum and maximum by referencing a cell in each case. And there's something else I have to do since I want to eventually copy this validation rule. I'm going to make this an absolute reference. And absolute and relative references were talked about in two other movies. And then I'm going to say OK. So I've established validation criteria in cell I5. Arrowing down to I6, I'm going to do the same thing. Select data validation. And this time I want to define a decimal. We, again, we have the same list of parameters. I'm going to choose between. And again, I'm not going to hard code it. I'm going to select the minimum value to be the value that's in D6 and the maximum value to be the value that's in E6. And then press F4 to make that an absolute reference. Left click OK. And the next one works a little differently. You can have a data validation rule established based on a list that you reference. And my list is going to be cells D7 to D9. That range has automatically been input by Excel using an absolute reference, which is what I want. Left-clicking OK. So I've set up validation rules for the other three items on the list, referencing the date, the time, and the text length, in the same way that I set up the validation rules for the whole number and decimal. I'm now going to copy those validation rules by pressing Control-C and then arrowing over to the left once, pressing the Shift key down and arrowing over three times, where now I need Paste Special. I'm going to paste the validations, or the validation rules, and then left-click OK. I'll escape to deselect that range. So one thing you may notice is that even though I've established validation rules and there are values in column H that don't adhere to those validation rules, for example, my list of acceptable shipping methods include Common Carrier, U.S. Post Office, and FedEx, and I have in cell H7 mail, and that clearly doesn't 
match anything on the list. So the validation rules are in effect for entries that you make after you establish the validation rules. If there are already content in the cell, there's nothing at this point that will call attention to that. And so you left click data validation and then left click circle invalid data. So now I have Excel telling me that I have some invalid data because the shipping weight 5 isn't between 10 and 50. And in fact, if I try to input 5 into that cell again, I'll get an error message. I'm going to left click retry. So I'll have to input some value that's between 10 and 50. So I'll input 12 and enter, and that's an acceptable entry. The same thing is going to be true with the cells to the right. Since I copied these same validations into columns I, J, and K, if I try to enter a 5, I'll get the same error message. So I'm going to escape out of that. And the reason why I didn't want to hard code the parameters for the validation rules, in other words, for the shipping weight, I set it up so that the acceptable whole number that I can input into cell H5 is some whole number that's between the value that's in D5 and E5. So if I go back and change the lower amount to, let's say, 4, and then go back to H5, I should now be able to enter 5 with no problem, which I can. So after you have Excel call out the invalid data points in your cells that contain data validation rules, you can either change the content in the cell or you can clear the validation circles. Clear validation circles. I'm also able to, with the drop down again, select data validation, and I can change this data validation rule to, let's say, be some number that's not between the values that are in D5 and E5. And when I do that, I can check this checkbox to apply the changes to all other cells with the same settings. Left click OK. And now I shouldn't be able to put any whole number that's between 4 and 50 into cell I5. I'm going to put 10 in there, and sure enough, I get my error message. I'll try 3, which is outside of the range between 4 and 50, and I'm able to do that. If at some point you find the need to get rid of the validation rules, left-click Data Validation, pull up Data Validation, and then left-click Clear All and any validation rule that's in effect for the selected cell or range will be cleared. So that was Excel's data validation functionality. We set up some validation rules to allow only a whole number to be input into a cell within a given range. We did the same thing with decimals. We also set up a validation rule that had a list as a reference for the acceptable content that would be entered into the cell. We can set up data validation rules for dates and times and text length. After we set up our validation rules, we copied these validation rules into other cells. Since we already had some content in some of the cells, we had Excel check for invalid data entries. It circled the invalid data entries, where we can then either input a valid value or delete the validation circles. And we also changed one of the validation rules, which we can have Excel apply to all cells containing that validation rule. And lastly, we found out how to clear validation rules from a selected range of cells.